should be made at some point. Schroeder goes with a season high 38. Boston wins it 112 or 122, 113. So the Seas are now two and two in overtime games, and even at six and six with their fourth win in five games. Bucks are back under 500 with their sixth loss in their last nine. Afterward, Jason Tatum on solving the puzzle. We had some tough overtime losses, and it's tough. But uh, you know, we figured this one out, and uh, we beat a good team regardless of who was playing, who wasn't. Uh, we'll take it. Win is a win. You guys took a gut punch at the end of regulation. How did you get yourselves together and close this out? Uh, just regroup. Uh, nothing you could do about it. You know, five more minutes. Uh, you know, guys made big plays. Dennis made big plays. Uh, you know, it was just a good win overall. You made a big play in overtime to get Rob Williams to the line, driving down the lane and dishing it off. Is that a play you think you would have made a year and a half ago? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, just drawing more attention each and every year. Uh, just trying to read the defense and what they what they're giving me, and uh, you know, find a big problem. You can tell Jason Tatum doesn't love the question about the playmaking nah. because it's become a question issue. He had only one assist in this game, but you know, like yeah, yeah I would have made that. Play. I would have made that play. Celtics get the win. That's the important thing, obviously, here. But but moving forward, what does Tatum need to be for the Celtics to be a contender in the East again? I think efficient, more than assists, okay. mean, because he's a scorer. But if you're efficient, I think Sam Mitchell, if I'm watching Sam Mitchell go 10 for 15, 12 for 20, um, it's different, and wins. Yeah. But when I start seeing these 38%, 10 for 25, 11 for 27, and we're losing – then I have a problem because he's not a facilitator. Let's understand he's not their point guard. Right. Uh, he's talented enough to make some plays, but I just think taking good shots instead of these questionable shots, I think that's what's getting the Boston Celtics in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I mean, he's got to get the ball moving. And it's not really about assists like you said. It's, I mean, it's about being efficient, making sure that, you know, look, anytime you're missing 10, 12 shots more than you make, that's a problem. And, and you know this, bad shots are like a bad cold. They'll just run through your entire team. Once one guy catches that cold, everyone catches it. And so what has happened with this Boston Celtics team, and this started two years ago. This just didn't start last year. This didn't start this year. Great point. This was two years ago, and this has been in the making because we've sat right here at this table and watched Jason Tatum and think he's an MVP candidate one day, but his shot selection is questionable. He takes tough shots. And so we've been talking about this for two years, and now all of a sudden the players on his team are talking about it publicly. And so you saw that question the reporter asked right there. That was, I'm not going to say inappropriate, but that wasn't the best of questions mm -hmm. because, uh, again, it's a basketball play, and basically what he's saying is, what you're basically asking me is, when I see someone open a year and a half ago, I wouldn't pass the guy the ball for a layup. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're asking is. So <laughs> you need to understand sometimes what you're listening to and what you are about to ask. Because to me, that was, you know, next time you call Jason Tatum and come over for an interview after a win, he may be like, nah, because I don't know what kind of questions you're going to ask me.